Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. You came back. In this week's video, what I have for you is another chatty do your nails with me video. I also have something very special in this video. We are in the process of testing out gel liquids and I try a matte gel top coat today on camera so you guys can try it out with me for the very first time. Never touched it before, just trying it today. So if that is something that you're into seeing, go ahead and stick around and let's get into it. I have my nails removed. I actually slept with them naked last night. Um, that was terrifying. I did not sleep well, but I wanted to record early this morning. So I wanted to make sure my removal was done. So that's where I'm at right now. I am going to prep my nails. Uh, I usually use the glass cuticle pusher. Now they have like glass files. I hated the glass files. I like never used to use them. I just don't like the way it feels on my nail. And that's kind of the same with the glass cuticle pusher, but I will tell you what, uh, nothing gets my cuticles cleaner, so I have started using it. Because look how good. I mean, it just works so well to get every... I didn't even think that my cuticles needed to be pushed back, honestly. I'm like, mm, they're not that bad. I don't like to push my cuticles back too often like I do my nails every week or so and sometimes I like to wait for every other or every third depending on how my nails look to like really give them a good pushback just because I don't I don't want big receding cuticles I don't know I just try to be very careful with my cuticles since I do do my nails so often I said doo doo uh, it's early, you guys, so this might, my voice might sound weird. Oh, here's another thing I use. Mm, it's broken, and I have, like, a whole box of other ones, but do I go and grab a new one? No. No, I do not. I just keep using the same one because that's, that's what I do. So this is turning out to be a very cute, quick cuticle push. Is take the little pointy end, which I use for literal everything at this point. If you don't have a cuticle pusher with a pointy end, I'm telling you, <laughs> you need one. It's a lifesaver for most things. So I just go in there and make sure there's no, like, junk around. I do have questions to answer, but I was going to wait until I start actually dipping to answer questions. So I could like wake up a little bit and do this prep. I also slept with Aquaphor on my hands last night just to kind of soften up my cuticles to make this easier today. I don't recommend um, sleeping with your nails naked, but you can even do that if you know that like you're going to do your mani the next day. You can just put Aquaphor on your hands before you go to sleep that night and then just make sure to wash with dis dish. Just make sure to wash with dish soap just to get all the oils off but it will help soften up your cuticles for the next day i used to use a cuticle softener and then i was like i don't know what's in this but i know aquaphor is pretty simple ingredients pretty gentle ingredients and it's moisturizing for my whole hand so now i just use that instead and and actually remove the cuticle with the glass file Okay, so I think we're prepped enough. Um, oh, actually, I just I usually just go over my nail really gently, like by the cuticle, 
I don't know if you can see where my lines are from where I just buffed, but I try and keep it just right around the cuticle. I give it a little buff um, just to get anything that I have missed. And my nails are, they're not the strongest, but they're not, they're not weak. They're not like paper thin or anything. You know. So as long as you're gently buff buffing, and you're trying to keep it just towards the end of your nails, you'll be fine. And, uh, you know, by the cuticle, not the end, like the tip. <laughs> you know what I mean. This would be like a situation that I would take the nippers and just get this little bit of skin. But man, be really so careful because these things are so sharp. Probably most of you already use nippers. I just really, they scare me so bad. So I only use them in dire situations. And ever so gently. Okay. So this will be the time, I'm I'm not doing my thumb. I don't know if I talked to you guys about my thumb already, but thumbs don't count. I'm not doing anything to my thumb. Uh, this will be the time that I would shape my nails. I don't, they're not very bad this time around. I didn't really lose a lot of my shape. You wanna use the finer grit side. This is a 180, uh, 100 grit. I think the 180 is the finer side. So you'd wanna use the finer side on your, because this is naked nails, so just want to be careful. In fact, a lot of times um, I will use this file, which is a 240-400, just to be more gentle on my nails, but I'm not doing that today. Oops, that is the coarse side. Just be careful when you're filing your naked nails. Um, and, you know, you're not supposed to do this back and forth thing, but I do it because they're my nails and I can do them however I want. And you know what? They're your nails and you can do them however you want. However, how, whatever makes you happy is totally fine because it's yours and you can do what you want. There is no right or wrong. There is only nails <laughs> and however you want to do them. I'm just showing you, you know, how I do my nails and that doesn't mean that I'm right or wrong or whatever. It's just, you know, how I do them. And how Lauren does hers is how she does hers, and yeah. So, just a quick shaping uh, tutorial. I mean, it's not much because my nails are already pretty shaped, but uh, I just make sure I get my top uh, really flat. And then when I angle it out, I angle it from like where the white meets the pink a little bit past that out. But I don't do it very hard. Like you don't want to go like too hard on that because that'll make it look weird. So you just want to do it a little bit. And then if you want them a little more coffin, what I would do after that is I would bring it just the tip part and bring just that in a little bit. Just the white part and bring it in a little bit. And the angle I'm using is just slight. The thing is, is go very slowly because you can always do it more, but you can't put it back. So I've probably over coffined where I would, would usually go right now with that. But that's okay. Thumbs don't count. So...
And the thing that I most recommend when it comes to shaping your nails is just go slowly. Do a little bit at a time until you find the shape that works for you. Like I used to go much more coffin than I go now, like much sharper. But now I'm just kind of like, mm. it's almost squared coffin. Because it looks quite more coffin while I'm actually shaping it. But once I get the dip powder on, you lose some of your shape when you dip which most of you probably know already, but. I don't know why, do your guys' ring fingers and pinkies grow faster than the rest of your nails? Or is it just me? Cause mine sure do. What is up with that? That is a break, no! You know what? Bet you. Bet you that happened while I was sleeping last night. That's okay. We're just going to dip over that and pretend like it didn't happen. And I'll be teabagging you in a week or so. That's okay. Like I was saying, my ring fingers and pinkies, I swear, grow faster than the rest of my nails. I'm like constantly having to bring them down quite a bit. So that it doesn't make my freaking middle, wide ass middle fingers look weird. So, you guys are going to be surprised to know that I'm doing just a papaya mani today. Uh, Lauren and I are going on a little girls getaway. And my toes are already done this color, so I'm just going to do my nails this color. Uh, my toes are not done with dip powder. They're done with gel polish. I'm definitely one of those people who still goes to get pedicures because... I freaking love pedicures. I just can't massage my own feet like that, you know? Like, I just can't. I probably could. I could talk my husband into it, but I don't want to. I don't want it. I want to go get a pedicure and relax for a little bit. Okay, so there's where we're at. This is my weirdo hand, so it's whatever. Does everybody have a weirdo hand? Like, I love this hand. I love the way it looks. I love the shape that I get. I just like the way I can hold it. This hand, I'm like, merp. It's my merp hand. So, that's okay. We all have a merp hand. I'm going to put pH bond on both hands. I have found to just pH bond both hands because I will forget to pH bond my other hand. So, I'm just going to do it now. And then sometimes I remember and I'll just pH bond it again because why not? It's not going to hurt anything. Honestly, I know a lot of people are like, well, you don't need pH bond. No, you don't need pH bond, but it helps. And I use it for a lot of things, just like Lauren does. I do think it's a very versatile uh, step because it doesn't hurt anything, but you're not like using too much activator. Like when, I don't know if you guys watched Lauren's video, but when she uses it to like look at what her, I got some pH bond in my dip powder. It's going to be fine. Okay. So we're going to start dipping. I got, you know, the Cascade Colorworks colored liquids, I mean, as per usual. So, and I'm going to start answering questions while I do this. I build an apex, but I build a very simple apex, as you guys may know from other videos. And yeah, we're just going to go get into it. Uh, Lauren asked, Lauren Christine, Lauren Christine Antia, is it Antia? Asked, how do you come up with all of the gorgeous colors you sell? Well, Lauren, that is a very good question. There's two of us, so um, we both come up with it kind of differently, I think. For me, gosh, it just kind of depends. Sometimes when we're creating colors, we'll come up with a color that doesn't really fit the collection we're doing right now. So we'll like hold it, hold on to it for later. Um... And sometimes that will turn into its own collection. Usually that happens with our drop-ins. Our drop-ins are, they tend to be just colors that we made that we're like, oh, these are gorgeous. Uh, but they don't really fit in what we're doing right now. So let's hold on to those for later. Sometimes we will 
uh, just find a color palette online that we just really, really like and then just make colors to match that. Sometimes we have an idea for one color and it turns into six colors. Sometimes we make glitters and then we're like, oop, we need to make solids to go with these. Or sometimes we make solids and then the glitters need to go with them. Um, these colors that we just came out with, we knew we wanted some like bright pastel highlighter, just fun ass summer colors. So that's how we came up with this particular launch that we just did. Okay, next question is from Cassie Denbrock, and she asks, how do you come up with the color combos and inspiration when you do your nails? I get nail, nail block all the time, girl. <laughs> Me too. I also get nail block all of the time. Like, it's so hard for me to come up with inspiration for what I'm going to do. A lot of times I will find my inspiration off Instagram. Uh... And I'll just like tweak it a little bit. I'll find something that I'm like, ooh, I like that. Or Pinterest. Or sometimes I'll just be like, I want to use a blue. So I'll just start looking for blue color palettes uh, on Google. And see kind of what pops up. Like I have put in like sunrise before. And just like looked at the color palette for a sunrise. And just come up with colors or... A lot of times, though, I'll just know that I want to use A, B, or C color. I'll just know I want to use one color, and then I'll just hold my swatches next to each other and see what goes with it. Um, anymore, it's pretty much like what colors are coming out, what colors have just come out. I need to use them. And also, if you've <laughs> seen my Instagram lately, I do like the same... I've been doing the same Manny for like two years, so I don't think I'm very creative, but... When it comes to like combinations. Nail block is real though. I mean, and I don't think that there's anything wrong with taking your inspiration from other ladies in the community as long as you, you know, give them. I mean, I don't really care if people use my manis as inspiration and they're not like inspired by it. I don't care. But there are people out there who do care. So just make sure that if you are getting your inspiration from people on Instagram... I mean, if you change it, if it, like, inspired you, but you changed it, I don't think that you necessarily need to be, like, inspired by it. But if it's pretty obvious, then you might want to, you know, give that person some credit. Give credit where credit is due. It's the kind thing to do. I said do in two different kinds of ways right then. So I'm just building my apex. You guys can see what I'm doing, right? <laughs> I do kind of a simple building of the apex and you can see I get into dipping and then I forget that I'm answering questions uh a general update okay Colleen Swanson asks, a general update on life and how CCW production has changed. Whew, my life has changed a lot. Um, so my husband was on the road still for a little while when we first started CCW and I was staying with Lauren and that was an adventure. And now my husband is home and Lauren and I have gotten a warehouse slash office space that's halfway in between us, which is really nice. Um, I think it's it's nice for me because I get to be home now and it's nice for her because even when my husband came off the road at first I was still driving down to her house and staying there you know three to four sometimes nights a week which was really hard I mean I love Lauren and I love her family and they're wonderful and fantastic but it's hard to be away from your own things your own stuff your own refrigerator your pets your husband <laughs> it's hard so um, we're on a new chapter now with the warehouse and it's different and it's amazing. And I think me being down there was hard for Lauren too. Not necessarily like me being there was hard for her, but having all of the work stuff in her house, it was like she was never not working. So this time I'm going to come closer to the cuticle. Um, 
So that's changed a lot, you know. Life is life. Life is good. Honestly, I'm happy to be off the road. I think I loved being on the road. I thought it was so much fun. It was such an adventure at the time. But I think I just like outgrew it and just was ready. We did it for six years and I just was ready to come off the road anyways. I couldn't really do it anymore. It was exhausting for me and I think it was really hard on my husband too. Harder than he's willing to admit. So it's nice to be home and to be able to get another dog and to be able to have kitty cats now and see my family. That's been really nice. I've I missed being able to see my siblings and my parents. So whenever I wanted to. Not that I didn't see them when I came off when I we had home time, but you know, it's nice to be able to be here for the things. See my daughter more often is nice and you know, it's good. It's good to be off the road. Okay, and then Melissa asked my question is having a business everything you thought it would be do you have more freedom also what is the hubby up to now focusing more on the company absolutely love watching your videos okay um that's many questions so is having a business everything you thought it would be uh yes it is um Valerie, you guys might know Valerie from the internet or you may not. She's one of my best friends. She's actually the one that got me into dipping in the first place. Uh, she reminded me a while back that I told her we used to work at Walmart together. And I told her when we were working at Walmart that I was so sick of making other people money. And that I just wanted to do something for myself. Now this was, <laughs> oh my goodness, 12 so years ago. So it took a while to make that come to fruition, but um, ha owning my own business is something that I've always wanted to do, always wanted to do. I just needed to find the thing that I could monetize and that I could be passionate about. Um, so thanks to Valerie, I found that and it's it's wonderful. I do have to say I work, you ask if I have more freedom. Uh, yes and no, because if I'm sick or luckily I have a partner who's amazing and wonderful and has my back in all aspects. So if I'm sick or there's a family emergency or some kind of something, I don't have anybody I have to like call and like ask permission for, but I do still have to give Lauren a heads up and she always has my back. Thank goodness. But so in that sense, yes, I have more freedom. On the other hand, I work more often. Like, I'm constantly working now. Always working. Always. Always, always, always. Literally 100% of the time. So, in that sense, no. I do not have more freedom. <laughs> um, and Don, my husband, he is driving locally now. So, and it's okay. <laughs> I'm hoping one day the company will grow to a capacity that we need to hire someone and he'll be able to, like, help us. Because I feel like we live in the Seattle area, so, well, not really. We don't really live in the Seattle area, but he works in the Seattle area. And it's just not fun. It's not fun to drive a truck in the city. I mean, it's not as bad as driving a truck in New York. That was, a. Uh, that was a challenge when we were over the road and we would have to do deliveries in like Brooklyn and stuff like that. That was never a fun time. The roads are so narrow out there. Actually, Pennsylvania has like the most narrow roads. Oops, I may have gotten on my cuticle a little bit. We shall see. Too bad. In fact, that'll just buff off, but might as well try and get it up right now, right? Okay. Oh no! <laughs> no! Go back. <laughs> Again, thumbs don't count. <laughs> Well, fuck. It's okay.
Okay, and the next question says, will you make gel base and top coats for those of us who have that have to do a uh, little that have to do a gel method and if not was there gel that you recommend um we actually are in the testing phase for gels right now we are trying to find y'all the perfect gel and we're super trying it's it would be easier to find a gel if we were not trying to do hema free for the people who have the allergy but we are trying to do hema free which is becoming a little more difficult to find a good hema free one that we're willing to like put our name on gel so we are testing some gels right now uh i may be if we get to top coat i may be doing a matte gel top coat from one of the ones that we're testing over papaya so you guys may be able to test it with me if i can get there um while i'm still filming but yes yes we will have gels regardless we will have gels eventually um we may have to do some that are with hema and some that are hema free um it just depends we're working on it it's it takes a lot longer and also lauren and i are not specifically gel people we are both we know dip powder really well we know dip liquids really well we know what we're talking about when it comes to that Gels are a little more difficult, so we're really trying to test them out before we sign up for something that we don't really know about. Look how fun this color is. I'm not tan at all. Like, I'm literally not tan at all. <laughs> I'm actually quite pale. And couldn't tell. Couldn't tell. Love these bright colors. Makes me want to go to the beach. I want to go to Hawaii. Do I need to do another dip? I might. Maybe. I might maybe. Um, Sybil requested how to apply chrome with dip nails. I have a chrome video, but... I need to redo it because it's not the greatest video in the world. So, and also back then I used to do it over top coat and it's actually easier and better if you do it over a color because it has more of a sticky layer. So, I think I will do one more dip. I don't really necessarily think I need to, but they're not that thick and I feel like I could build up the color at my cuticle more. Do you guys think I... Am I going to mess it up by doing that? I don't know. Okay. I guess that's the end of my questions, which... I guess that's my fault for waiting so long to... Or not waiting very long to record... after I asked, which that's okay. I'll just try and find some things to blab about. Yeah, one more dip is good. So I'm curious to know from you guys, if you liked Lauren's video, do we like having Lauren around? Obviously we like having Lauren around. I think it's, I think it's good because she shows a whole other perspective and her video style is different than mine. But I think that's really good. Oh yeah, that last dip did it for me. So if you guys see, I kind of push towards my cuticle when I'm trying to get it like right in there. And I find that that really helps to get a good cuticle line instead of just like trying to start at the cuticle i kind of push towards it i may have fucked up right there that's okay i get a little i get a little excited sometimes no still looks good so are you guys excited for allergy season 
Me too, me too. Shh, quiet. I wish I had more questions to answer. Coming up with shit on my own is uh, quite difficult, especially this early in the morning. I do want to show you guys the matte top coat though. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a dip of clear because I always do a dip of clear. Lauren does not, but I do. I just feel better about it. I don't know. I feel like I can file more aggressively if I have a dip of clear over. I don't know why. It's just my comfort thing, okay? And this is Cascade Colorworks Clear also. Let me dust this off real quick. Look, I fixed my little oopsies. That's the real reason I wanted to do another dip. Okay, so all the clear is on. You see how it's kind of wet looking still? That's exactly what you want from your clear. So I'm gonna activate these and then I'm gonna dip my other hand off camera and then I will come back. <gasps> Spell my activator, no. Okay, like I said, I'm gonna activate, I'm gonna dip my other hand and then I'll come back and then we'll try the matte top coat and see what we think together. It'll be a good time. Okay, be right back. Okay, uh, I filed and I buffed, and if you guys would like to see like a filing video, I will definitely do one. I've done a few before, so I just figured I just, for the sake of time, do it off camera, but that's where we're at, filed and buffed. Can you believe I just matching hands one color? What has happened to me? Who am I? I've got my Sun UV lamp here. This Old Faithful had this lamp for like, I don't even know, three years at this point. It's forever. So first things first, I'm going to do a thin layer. This is the base that we're, the gel base we're testing out as well. I washed my hands. Um, yeah, this is the gel base that we're testing out as well. So I'm just going to put a thin layer of base on. Okay, I'm gonna cure that for 60 seconds. Okay, so now we have the base on. Let's do the matte top coat. I hope this is a good matte top coat. I'm so picky about my matte top coats. Okay. Hopefully it doesn't end up streaky. I hate streaky matte top coats. I'm nervous. <laughs> Hopefully that's self-leveling because I can see where I messed that up. I find that a lot of gel tends to be self-leveling, so we shall see. Okay, I think I have it pretty applied on there. Let's give it a cure, 60 seconds. Okay, oh, oh my goodness. Dude, 
huh. I think I really like this matte top coat because I don't know if you saw, but on my index finger, I had messed it up. It looked messed up. Okay. Okay. Maybe I like it. Maybe I like it. What do y'all think? Looks pretty matte to me. I'm going to get outside and get a picture. And I will be back for y'all to check out the finished product. So what did you guys think of that video? Did you like that video? What did you think of the matte gel top coat? Uh, I've been wearing it. I don't know. I just did my makeup. So there's like eyeliner, mascara. I don't know. Um, I've been wearing it now for how many days? Like at least four or five days and it's not peeling up at all. It's still pretty matte. My hands are dirty, guys. Don't judge me. I just did my makeup. But uh, it stayed pretty matte and it hasn't peeled up at all. So I like the gel base too. So um, this is just one of many that we're trying. So who knows which one we're going to keep. But I think this one is, I think it's pretty good. What do you guys think? What? from what you could tell in the video anyway. I don't know if you could really tell in the video. So that is all I have for you this week, you guys. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for watching. And hopefully next week we'll be back with another Lauren video. I'm not sure if it's gonna be her or me. Uh, we're trying to do this back and forth thing. So we'll see if it's her or me and what she's gonna do because I have no idea. So hopefully it'll be something fun. All right, okay, see you next week. Bye! I'm kind of in a hurry this morning, so we may not have as much fun uh, extra stuff. I'm going on a trip with Lauren for a few days. We're having a little, you know, friends getaway, a little team building. It's always business when we talk to each other anymore. So, you know, you gotta, you gotta like nurse those relationships and build those bonds. So it's not just business all the time. So that's what we're doing. Maybe I'll throw in a couple of clips of the place that we're at. Ooh, that's a good idea. I should do that. Anyway. Okay, that's all I got for you right now, and I will talk to you guys later. Okay, I love you. Bye. The snow makes me happy. The snow makes me happy. Squirrel it. So look at the veracity of the glass. Yeah. Because that means something. The fact that it's dripping off the sides. So yes, check that's out. veracity. Oh, okay. Veracity is how much it sticks to the glass. <laughs> what does it mean? Okay, ready? Yep. Ready? Ready? One, two, three, go. I'm sorry. such a weirdo. And the grapefruit and home with my emotional support dog. I didn't die, but I am getting too old for this shit.